Okay, let's begin our today's tutorial session. So for today's class, uh, it's going to be the continuous version of uh, last week's tutorial. So last week's tutorial, we looked into the closed economy, or we call it a simple economy, okay, in which it is called as two sector. However, for today's class, we are going to look into the open economy. I thought it's more romantic to do that. So that's why I did say Sean. Ah, uh, it's okay. It's on now, on. Never mind. Okay. So, um... When we talk about open economy, we look into three sector economy and four sector economy. So we can call all this economy as open economy. Yeah. So open economy. So we talk about three sector economy in which we basically say that um government intervention is involved. Right, so therefore, when we talk about three sector economy, so there is government spending, but there is no trade yet. Okay, but for four sector, there is government spending and there is trade. Okay, so therefore, the difference here is between one without trade and one with trade. But here you can see today's focus is that government is involved. So therefore, later on, once you have your disposable income, you are going to uh the target with the taxation. And also to take into account of any of the transfer payments that you receive. Transfer payments means like those uh, unemployment benefits or state benefits. So we are going to use questions to go through the contents of today's class. So question number one, the economy of uh, Timbuktu has the following information. Autonomous consumption is 10 billion. MP is, MPC is 0 0.7. Tax is 20% of income. So 20% of income. So therefore, this one is induced or autonomous. 20% of income. So therefore, it's dependent. Okay, it's dependent on the income. So therefore, this one will affect our induced part later on. Yeah? So this one will affect our induced part later on. So it's like a, it's like a tax rate, you know? Like the more you earn, okay, the more uh, tax you're going to pay. 20% of the income that you earn are going to be paid. Okay, the government expenditure is... Uh, 15 billion and the transfer payment is 5 billion. Transfer payment is that unemployment benefits or their state benefits. Investment was 20 billion this year, uh, that year, and the net exports is 10 billion. So they have calculated the net exports for you. Okay, with detailed workings, calculate the following. First, the consumption function and then followed by aggregate expenditure function and equilibrium real GDP. So you can see the first two are just function and the, uh, the third one is the value, the value of equilibrium real GDP. So what you need to do when you come across questions like this, transfer all the information into the uh into your answer booklet first. So you know all the all the uh information that have been provided to you on in the question itself, you write it down. Okay, so let me show you how to write it down. Okay. So today we look into tutorial six on open economy. Okay, so question number one. So first thing you need to do is uh, write down all the information that have been given. So like for example, autonomous consumption is 10. I don't have to write the units for simplicity. So because it's stated is uh, 10 billion, right? Okay, so I put all the autonomous in first. The autonomous in, government spending equals to 50. Transfer payment equals to 5 billion. Okay. Investment equals to 20. And then net exports equals to 10. Per token. Yeah, correct. Okay. Now I write all this uh, autonomous 
components on the top first and then followed by the induced one. Like for example, marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.7, which is my B, la, this one. Okay, and what else? I have income tax rate. So income tax rate, or sometimes we call it as marginal rate of taxation, MRT. It's okay, we do not use the uh, short forms over here, it's okay. But we just write income tax rate, we follow the questions. Okay, and then equals to 0 0.2, right, 20%, because it says at 20%. So 20%, that means 0 0.2. Okay, that's how you need to do when it comes to final exams. You transfer all the data first. Okay, then we can do already question number A. Okay, question number A is to calculate consumption function C equals to A plus B Y. Okay, so Y here spends, uh, it refers to my disposable income. The uh, disposable income of the people in the country. We look from a, mac from a macro perspective. So the thing is this, because government intervention is being involved, you can see that government is involved and therefore you have to pay taxes and also we have to take into account of any transfer payments that we receive. TL here means transfer payments like unemployment benefits or state benefits that have, that you receive from the government themselves. Okay, you have government intervention being involved and you have to pay taxes as well. So therefore, your this one income here will be extended. Okay, so therefore how it will look like. So let me extend it. So A plus B, first of all, you have your gross income. You need to minus the autonomous tax that you must pay. That means this kind of tax is the tax that you have to pay regardless of your income and then minus your induced tax Okay, induced tax, that means that's dependent on your on your income itself, the tax that's dependent on your income, plus transfer benefits. Okay, you need on transfer benefits. Okay, so now I can put all the values in. So the difference for this question over here, uh, as compared to the previous one, is that now our income here is extended version, yeah? You have more values to be added in. So we do not have any autonomous tax here. So I put zero and then induced tax 0 0.2y plus transfer benefit is five. So you can expand it. So it's all about algebra. So zero, I don't have to write. Okay, and then uh, this one, 0 0.7 times 0 0.2, 0 0.14. Let me know if the value is incorrect. Huh? And then, five. right? Okay. So now I have all the values ready. I can do my calculations. So add all the autonomous in, 13.5 plus 0.56y. Okay, so that's my consumption function. You leave your answers like this. That's the answers. If you want to put units, also can, but you can just leave it like that if you want to. So you can see the workings are a bit more now because why your income has been extended. Okay, now question B, I can calculate my aggregate expenditure function. So I can form the function itself. So we know that um, the aggregate expenditure equals to my aggregate demands. So we look into the four components in which we have consumption plus investments plus government spending plus net exports. Now, since in this question, okay, we, do, we already have the next exports value by itself, we don't have to do any much of calculations anymore because later on, you are going to see that net exports can be extended as well. I put the values in consumption. I got the function ready. I put the consumption functions in. Plus investment is 20. Plus government spending is 50. Plus the export is 10. So as simple as that, I can form my equation straight away. 93.5 plus 0 0.56y. Okay, so here is the answers for the function. Now, once I have the functions, I can calculate the values of the equilibrium real income. Equilibrium real income, in which we know that output approach equals to the expenditure approach. Y equals to AE. 
So therefore, y equals to 93.5 plus 0 0.56y. So I move around 0 0.44. Y equals to 93.5. And therefore, I move around at the end. My y will equals to, let's say I put the values over here. 93.5 divided by 0 0.44. 93.5 divided by 0.44 is 212.5. Okay, so therefore, 212.5 billion. Okay, so here is the answers for question number C. Okay, so now let's move on to question D. Okay, um, the calculate the autonomous expenditure multiplier. Okay, so because for this scenario we have the government spending and trade, so if I refer to my uh multiplier formula, I have to use the four sector economy one. Yeah, because it's an open economy in which I have these four components. C, I, G, and X. So therefore, this is the formula that I'm going to use. Now, see probably the formula. Huh? Now, in case if you're wondering how all this formula being derived, make sure you watch the uh, videos that I've created so that it explains to you how this three multiplier formula being derived. Okay? Now, see probably this one is 1 divided by 1 minus B, bracket 1 minus T plus M. So you can see this one is together one. Huh? So three things in three components here. 1 minus the second component is B bracket 1 minus T plus M. Okay, now just in case if you do not know how the formula is being derived, please spend some time to watch this video. Okay, so, um, but the steps of how it is being derived not so important. Yeah, that one is for extra knowledge. Okay, so the question D is to calculate the multiply effect. The question E is to calculate the new aggregate expenditure function if the government decides to spend an additional government decide to spend an additional 5 billion on new school and hospital. So means what? Means the change in government spending increased by 5 billion. So that's the questions for question E. Okay. And the last question is, once we form a new aggregate expenditure function, we have to find the equilibrium real GDP as a result of the change in E. So very simple, simple already. Huh? So let's work on it together. Okay, so uh, I want to calculate my uh, multiplier question D alpha equals to okay, 1 minus B bracket 1 minus T plus M. Okay, so remember this one is extracted from this formula. Yeah. 1 minus D, 1 minus B bracket 1 minus T plus M. Okay. Now here, because they do not provide you M yet, so it's okay. Later, we will use that later uh, for the upcoming questions. So, I can actually write 1 as a proportion of 1 minus B. B is my MPC, 0 0.7. 1 minus T. T is here 0 0.2 yeah the income tax rate the t here stands for income tax rate okay so 0 0.2 plus 0 because don't have m yet so try to put into calculator you will get 2.273 okay these are answers multiplier okay then after that i have to form a new aggregate expenditure function aggregate expenditure function in the year two okay so now, initial the aggregate expenditure function is 93.5 plus 0.56y. And now, because there's an increase in government spending, change in government spending, right, by 5 billion. So I can put that in here into this function. And then I can just calculate it easily. To form this, 
aggregate expenditure function for the new year for the for the for the new one now once i have new aggregate expenditure function i can calculate the new output as well or the new equilibrium again i want to calculate equilibrium real income or real gdp y equals to ae okay for the new one so therefore y equals to 98.5 plus 0 0.56 y so i move around again and at the end what did i get i get uh two two three point eight six billion okay so therefore you can see your total output has increased So you can see a five billion increase in the government spending has resulted in an increase in the total output by more than that. Okay, so from two one two point five, it now ends up at two two three point eight six. Why is that so? Because of this multiplied effect that plays a role. Okay, so that's answer for the full question number one. Okay, we are done with question one. Let's move on to question number two. Okay, it's very similar as well, question number two. Actually, today's class is basically working on questions only. Okay, this country is a developing country currently and situated in a remote region in Central Asia. The country is rich in crude oil and gas resources. Its economy has been uh, bogged down by a recent severe downturn with unemployment reaching almost 40%. Autonomous is 50, investment is 20, government expenditure is 50, autonomous tax is 10, 20 is exports, 25 is imports, transfer payment are 5. You have more info here already. Okay, but still the imports one, uh, is still, we only have the autonomous one. We By right, that should have an induced import as well. Okay, but we'll come to that in a while. All expressed in billion of dollars, MPC is 0 0.6, income tax rate is 0 0.3. Provide detailed workings and answer the following. So the first one is to calculate the consumption function. Second is to calculate the aggregate expenditure function. And the third one is to calculate the equilibrium value. And then followed by multiplier. Okay, let's do the first four questions first. Okay, so step one, we transfer all the information that we have to our answer booklet. Okay, question number two. So my tips is you write all the autonomous on the top first. Okay, so things will be uh, clearer. So for example, I know my autonomous is 50. Okay, no need to write any unit. Lah. Just put it as figures. Investment is 20. Okay, government spending is 50. So write all the autonomous. Autonomous taxation is, let me zoom in a bit, uh, 10. Exports is 20. And we have imports as well, which is 25. Yeah, 25, 10, 20, 25, 10, 20, 25. Okay, and we have transfer payment as well, which is 5. Okay, and then now put our induced one. Like for example, marginal propensity to consume, which is 0 0.6. And income tax rate which is 0 0.3 yeah all this i get it from the question okay done so now we start answering the questions ready okay question a to calculate consumption function c equals to a plus b y so a is 50 plus b is a uh, 0 0.6 and then I have to extend my y, y minus t. We have autonomous text, which is 10. And then ty, which is 0 0.3y plus 5. In case if you're wondering, I will show you. This one is t, this one is ty, and this is tr. Okay, so I explained this is autonomous text, this is induced text, and this is transfer payments. Transfer payments or unemployment benefits. So I have extended it and now I can calculate my answers. 50 plus, plus 0 0.6y minus 6 minus 0 0.18y um, and then 3. 
Okay, and then move around. The, 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 the 47 plus. Zero point four two Y. Y. Okay, so leave your answer as a function. Okay, done. Now let's move on to question B. Aggregate expenditure equals to C plus I plus G plus N X. So therefore, uh, here we have to extend this one. Okay, N X here. Okay, so equals to C plus I plus G plus X minus M minus induced import as well. Yeah, so therefore here, imports here, we have two components. One is autonomous imports and the one is induced imports in which that the residents in the country might import more when the uh, income increases, when the national income increases. When on average, people having higher income, they might import more. So therefore, imports we have two components in which one is autonomous and one is induced. So I repeat, so this one, it is autonomous and this one is induced. But here, you do not have any induced imports yet, so it's perfectly fine. So we substitute all the uh, numbers that we have first. Investment is 20, this is 50, uh, plus export is 20 minus 25, and then minus zero, because we do not have induced imports yet. Okay, so let's calculate what is the answers. 1, 1, 2, 1, uh, let me see, let me use uh, 47 plus 20 plus 50 plus 20 minus 25, yeah, 1, 1, 2, correct, 1, 1, 2, and then uh, plus 0 0.42, y. Okay, here's the answers. So leave it as a function. And then question C is equilibrium. Y equals to AE. So Y equals to 1, 1, 2 plus 0 0.42 Y. Okay, so I move around with the values. So 1 minus 0 0.42 is 0 0.58y equals to 1, 1, 2. So y equals to 193.10 billion. Okay, and now I can calculate my multiplier as well. Okay, alpha equals to 1 over 1 minus B bracket 1 minus T plus M. So again, we do not have any uh, imports, uh, induced imports yet. So I can just put the uh, numbers in. B is how much? So MPC is 0 0.6, okay? So 0 0.6, 1 minus T. T is 0 0.3. Zero. So at the end, what did I get? Um, I should get one point seven two four. Okay, so that's a multiplier. Okay, I zoom that zoom out for you to copy.
Okay, next question. Question E, the government expenditure decides to increase its spending by 20 billion. So government spending decides to increase their spending. Calculate its effect on the new equilibrium GDP. So um, very similar to what we did just now. So there are actually two methods for us to do this. So I'll show you two methods over here. Question E, you have two methods. So let's say we talk about method one is what we learned uh, before our midterm test. Okay, so remember I said that uh, you can use the uh, this uh, what we call as the this equation to calculate the change in output. You use the multiplier times the change in injection or change in the autonomous uh, injection. Okay, so therefore we know that the multiplier is one point seven two four. Okay, times the change in injection. So here there is increase in government spending by twenty billion. Okay. So times 20, and you get 34.48. So that means there should be an increase in the uh, in the output by 34.48. So therefore, to calculate my new outputs, I will just use the old one. The old one is 193.1. Okay. I use the old one plus the new, but that's new change. Okay. So 193.1. Plus thirty four point four eight equals to the new outputs, which is two two seven point five eight. Okay, if you want to put unit, also can put the dollar sign and billion, also can, but it's optional for you. As long as see the value is correct, that's more than enough. So that's one of the methods. Another method is like what we did in the question one just now. So we calculate the new aggregate expenditure function first, and then followed by the new outputs. So we can do another method, method two, in which we calculate the aggregate expenditure function first. AE in the new year itself is, so I use the initial aggregate expenditure, which is 112 plus 0 0.42. So 112 plus 0 0.42Y, okay, plus the change in government spending. So I can rewrite into 20, and then uh, 132 plus 0 0.42y. Okay, so to calculate the new output itself, I just use 132 plus uh, 0 0.42y. Okay, I move around, move around with the terms. Uh, move around. So 1 minus 0 0.42 is 0. 58y equals to 132, then uh, 132 divided by 0 0.58 is same thing, 227.58 or 59, okay, plus minus 0 0.01, it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's the answers, so two methods. Okay, question number three. So again, we are doing the same uh, questions again and again. Uh, so make sure you know how to derive the answers. Okay, uh, today middle death uh, is rich in natural resources. Much of its economy dependent on its exports of diamonds, crude oil, gas, and gas resources. Having moved in recent times into manufacturing of heavy machinery, the country is the largest producer of the wheat in the world. Its national income for 2012 is driven by the following. Autonomous consumption is 60, investment is 100, government expenditure is 70, autonomous tax is 20, export is 80. So all is being expressed in billions of dollars. Okay, and then now the marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.6, income tax rate is 0 0.3, and import tax rate is 0 0.1. So we have import tax rate over here. Okay, um, so calculate the following with the detailed working. So again, the first one is consumption function followed by aggregate expenditure function that equilibrium real income. And then I want to calculate the actual value of the consumption. And then last one is multiplier. Okay, so again, these are the questions you'll come across in your finals. Yeah, so um, first thing, step one, write down all the values. Okay, write down all the values. Uh, 
on your answer booklet. So A is 60. Okay, and then investment is 100. Government spending is 70. So you'll try to do first and check the answers with me later on. So 60, 170, 20, 80, 20, 80. Taxation is 20. Okay, and then marginal propensity to consume is 0 0.6. Income tax rate is 0 0.3. That means 30% of tax rate. And then we have import rate which is 0 0.1. Okay, done. Okay, now I can start calculating. Question A, C equals to A plus B, Y. Okay, then just substitute that in. So here we do not have transfer benefits. Okay, so transfer benefit is zero. Yeah, so you can just ignore that. So y minus t minus ty plus tr. So here we only have autonomous tax and induced tax. We don't have transfer payments. Okay, then we can calculate ready. The eight plus zero point four two y. A question B aggregate expenditure equals to C plus I plus G plus N X. So we know N X is basically X minus M, the big M, and then the M Y. Okay, so. That gives us my net exports. Okay, A plus 0 0.42 Y plus investment. Well, investment is 100, government spending is 70, plus exports is 80, minus imports. So, no imports here, minus MY is 0 0.1 Y. So I can calculate straight away. Okay. Okay, next equilibrium. y equals to ae so y equals to 298 plus 0.32 y and then move around billion Okay, now I have all the info already. I can calculate the actual value. The consumption equals to 48 plus 0 0.42 Y. So I can just substitute that in. 438.24 goes to 232.06 billion.
Okay, so let me know if the values are incorrect. Huh? And the last one is multiplier. So let me calculate it first. Multiply equals to 1 over 1 minus B, 1 minus T plus M. So 1 over... One minus B. B is zero point six. Okay, and then tax rate is zero point three, and then import rate is zero point one. Okay, so at the end I get one point four seven, which is my multiplier. So we are done with this question. So again, it's a calculation question. Okay, we have done with all the calculation questions. Now, one last question is just to uh talk about the graph only. Yeah. So uh, question four here: Private investment is likely to contribute significantly to economic growth in two thousand eleven, and is targeted to grow twelve point eight percent or one one five billion a year. Growth will be supported by robust consumption, strong external demand. The Malaysian economy is expected to register strong growth of seven percent in two thousand ten and expand between five and six percent in two thousand eleven. This compared to a one point seven percent contraction in 2009. To improve learning institutions, 4.6 billion will be set aside to build and upgrade schools. So there will be some investment as well here. Okay, uh, identify the key expenditure components of growth for the Malaysian economy using the aggregate expenditure analysis. Actually here, just talking about what are the components that uh, boost the growth in Malaysian economy. Actually it's all, uh, I feel that it's C, I, G, and then X. Yeah, so I'm not, not too sure why it's only three components we mentioned here, but basically all the four components will have an impact in, in boosting the economic, uh, economic growth in Malaysia. But the question A is not our focus. I want to talk about question B. Using aggregate expenditure diagram to describe the short run effect of one of the expenditure components described in question 5A. Now, this one actually last time uh, they combined together with ADS, but I think in the new tutorial, they, they uh, she removed it already. So you can uh, see here, use an aggregate expenditure diagram. So here we have to use AE graph. Okay, let's say assuming together with the use of ADAS. So I want you to use two diagram, combined diagram. One is on AE and one is on ADS. Okay, let's have a look into this one because if it's AE only, it's very simple. Okay, let me show you first. Uh, let me show you how, how, how if it's the AE only. Okay, so let's scroll down. Okay, so first of all, uh, Okay, before we look into answers, just uh, one quick recap. If today the question is a simple version, like the one that you saw just now, without uh combining both graphs, if it's on if it's only AE, uh, if it's only AE, okay, we just need to show an increase in AE. So AE is increasing then. Okay, so therefore I can draw uh, just move this a bit. Okay. okay, so if today is just AE, so I can draw my y-axis and x-axis, this is my origin, this is my aggregate expenditure, this is my output, in should we call it as real GDP as well, okay, and we will have our aggregate expenditure, right, this is the aggregate expenditure, and we have a 45 degree, 45 degree line like this, because why? It's, it represents that, uh, it represents that, uh, y equals to AE. That means a rise in the outputs will lead to a rise in the aggregate expenditure by proportional. Okay? And we have the AE function. So this is our AE function here. So when I so how do I plot the graph again in case you forgot? So here, it is the autonomous one. Okay? So these figures over here is my autonomous figures. That means the amount that I have to spend, although I earn nothing. Okay? So here what happened is we can make a conclusion at this point A, Okay, the amounts are the same. So this amount of AE is the same amount as this one. Okay, that's why we always say uh, Y equals to AE. Okay, so if today the scenario is AE increases, um, or what we call as, let's say today, 
the change in the autonomous, the change in the injection increase. Like for example, increase in government spending, increase in investments. Okay, all these are part of the change in injection, right? Change in injection. So therefore, all these will result in the upward shift of aggregate expenditure curve. So therefore, my aggregate expenditure curve will shift upwards. So like this. Okay, A E one. Okay, it moved upwards. Okay, so that means at this point A, it moved upwards to here. What happened is the output still the same, but expenditure increased already. So how producers will have to figure a way out. So here it goes to it becomes A one. So from point A move to A one. So we know that aggregate expenditure is too high already, right? But the output still remain the same. So therefore, producers and firms have to figure a way out to produce more to increase the outputs. And moving from point A1 to point B over here, in which at the end, it is the same amount of aggregate expenditure and the same amount of output. Okay, so that's how, uh, that's what we learned in the previous class. Okay, so if, uh, let's say, uh, for example, I put a value, uh, let's say I simply take a value uh, from the calculation. Okay, let me take one calculation here. Okay, AE just now is uh, 298 plus 0.32Y. Okay, simply put a value. Lah. Let's say, let's say now I put a value here. AE equals to, let's say, uh, 200 plus 0.3Y. Okay, so now maybe because of an increase in injection by, by uh, let's say, 30 billion. So it becomes 230 plus 0.3y, okay, something like that. So you can see there is an increase here. Okay, so that's why we call it an increase in injection. Okay, now what if, right, what if today the change here is, uh, the, the change here is not because of the injection, but because of the induced one. Let's say, assuming it's the induced one, like this one, this part over here, how? Okay, so the graph will be like this. There will be no shift. Okay, so let me show you as well. But this is usually for extra knowledge only. But still, uh, let me show you since we talk about this. Okay, so this is my origin. So this is my aggregate expenditure curve. And this is my Y, which is my real GDP. Okay, and then again, we have Y equals to AE. Okay, and initially, let's say this is the graph. Okay, so this is the initial point A in which the aggregate expenditure equals to y. So this is my aggregate expenditure, the 200 plus 0.3 y. Okay, now uh, let's say, uh, let's say today I want to change this amount, no longer 0.3 y, it becomes let's say 0.5 y. So how the graph looks like, the graph will not shift, but it will just uh, move a bit upwards already. Okay, because why? Because for every $1 of income that you earn, you will spend 50% of it. So it becomes a bit more steeper. Okay, so therefore, AE, the new AE curve, the autonomous is still the same, but now the graph itself, it looks a bit steeper. Because why? Because you will spend more of the induced parts. Okay, 0 0.5 of the income being spent. Okay, so in the event, if it's only the change in the induced part, then the graph will look like this. So therefore, the new point is at point B over here, in which this is the new aggregate expenditure, followed by the new outputs over here. Okay, so there will be a difference in terms of how we show the graph itself. So conclusion, conclusion is that if today it is because of the change in the autonomous, okay, it will result in the shift of AE. Okay, like this one, the scenario number one, the graph one. So the graph one. Okay, if today we look into a scenario in which there is no any change in the injection in the economy, but because of the change, the change in the uh induced part, change the induced one from let's say zero point three y to zero point five y. Okay, then the graph will look like this. Okay, so that's uh for your extra recap. Okay, but usually I don't think you really use it. Okay, but at least since uh, you have an idea on this. So now let's back to this question. Now, if let's say today I did not complicate the question, if I just say use AE diagram, then your answers will be on the left, this one only. 
your answer will just be as simple as this. Of course, you change the aggregate expenditure function now, but that one is just a query question. There's no any function being given to you, but the graph is just like this. An upward shift of AE, okay, for that question. But if I want to make things complicated a bit, I want to combine together with ADS, then I will show you the full answers here. Okay, so, okay. First of all, we start from this, um, First of all, again, my y-axis here is aggregate expenditure, and this is my y, which is my real GDP, and we have the ADAS. So on the up one is aggregate expenditure graph. On the bottom one is ADAS graph. So on the bottom one, here is price level, and here again is real GDP or your outputs. So initially, I start from this point A over here, in which my outputs equals to my uh, aggregate expenditure at 900. So I go down, I plot going down. And it starts from this point A as well. Okay. Now, what happened is there'll be a rise in the components like what we mentioned here, consumption, investment, uh, government spending, and net exports, right? So therefore, it will shift the aggregate expenditure upwards. So from AE to AE2, this one. Okay, so that means now my graph will be shift upwards. Okay, shift upwards first. Okay, so shift to point B over here already. Okay, point B over here. Now at point B, now my output is 1,100. So this increase in output can be represented by the rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve. So my aggregate demand curve also shift rightwards. Okay, to this point B over here. Okay, so now you see both equals to 1,100 already. A, but there's one problem more. Because at this point B over here in ADS diagram, it's not in the equilibrium yet. Okay, there is a shortages. So therefore, I want to move back to the equilibrium, which is at point C. So if I move back to point C, my aggregate expenditure will be affected as well. So therefore, when I explain the real wealth effect, the substitution effect, as well as the profit incentive effect, for the graph to move back to point C over here, my aggregate expenditure graph will be affected as well. Yeah, because some outputs will have to be for go already. So from 1,100 to 1,000, right? Because at point C over here, you only produce up to 1,000. So therefore, point B is too much already. So therefore, I want to go down a bit. From point B, it shift downwards. Okay, back to, not back to, uh, go down a bit to point C over here. Okay, in which at the end, it result in the aggregate expenditure of 1,000, up to 1,000 for aggregate, aggregate expenditure graph, and 1,000 for the, uh, ADS graph. Okay, so the only thing that's a bit complicated is that it's not a one-off thing in which the aggregate expenditure should shift upwards. If shift upwards ready, then it goes down a bit. Why is that going down a bit? Because this one, we want to match with the ADS. Because when it shift upwards, it will result in the ADS not in the equilibrium yet. So therefore, I want to go down a bit to reduce the outputs to be able to back to equilibrium in the ADAS diagram. So therefore, you have these extra things over here as compared to the previous analysis that we did. So at the end, we result at point C, at this point C as well. Okay, so I have put the sentences over here for your reference. Okay, you can read through it. But usually, I believe you do not really need to use this. The most is just the AE curve only. Either AE or ADS. They might not ask you to combine both. Okay, so uh, one last question here is for your extra practice if you want to. Uh, this was from the past years. Yeah, you can try and do it and see if the value is correct or not. Yeah, in case if the value is incorrect, feel free to let me know. So these are the contents that I want to cover for uh, today's class. Okay, let me stop recording.